everybody. Sunday night, time to shoot some arrows. I'm pretty rusty myself. But we're going to learn to kick target panic buck tonight. Last week, we had a little dud here. We talked a little bit about back tension, execution with the silver back. We talked a little bit about that, gave you some exercises, um, training exercises, not physical exercises, uh, some things to work on. And we're going to go a few steps further than that. And I've got a pretty cool uh, little setup for you. Um, got a lot of, lot of Knock On Nation help now. My man Justin is actually going to post a sweet little practice sheet. Um, we'll post it later on the Knock On TV page, but it's also going to be at the John Dudley Athlete page. Um, he's going to post that right now. And that's going to be really cool. You're going to see, I'm going to teach you today how we're going to apply that. And that sheet is going to allow you to pick different targets and also scaled in different ways in order for you to make them work with your site. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, it's going to work really well. Um, and I guess before I, I don't want to forget this, um, big part of me learning from people is giving them credit. And this um, idea that I'm going to share with you guys later about how to actually build a positive mental picture for yourself utilizing these aiming sheets, this was actually something that I worked on years ago and uh, a good buddy of mine, Faye Friggin from down in North Dallas, uh, actually came up with that years ago as a training method and I really, really liked it, incorporated it into a lot of my training systems and it's been working awesome. So thanks Faye and today all you guys out there are gonna learn a little bit about this. So. Let's talk a little bit about target panic. So target panic is a form of anxiety. It's an uneasiness of the mind. So if you have target panic, then there's gonna be a lot of different things that you can try because I don't personally believe that there's one specific thing that is relative to target panic. There isn't one method. Some people freeze beneath the target. Some people freeze off the target. Some people you know just have panic overall so there's a lot of things that you need to get your head around everything's gonna be everybody's gonna be a little bit different I'm gonna show you several different methods and maybe one of these is gonna work better for you than others and we're gonna go through that but really what's most important is your process we've talked a lot about process in the past and I'm gonna to continue to talk about process constantly because Process helps occupy the mind. That's the reality. If you're occupying your conscious thoughts with the process, it's a lot more difficult for that negative thought process to creep in. You know, a lot of times if people are hunters and they shoot and end up shooting over the deer, shooting through the antlers, it's because their focus was on the antlers and their focus wasn't on their process and then where that pin needed to be to go through that shot. So I'm gonna talk quickly about that. First and foremost, whenever you're on the line, I always have my bow down at my side. If it's my target bow like this one, I use my stabilizers down by my side. If by chance it's my hunting bow, I normally like to let it sit right between my legs like this so that I can relax my front shoulder. If I had my hunting pants on I have a bow holder where I can support that I think it's important for resting the front shoulder okay so from there the process that I want you to think about each and every time there's a lot of mental aspects that we're going to talk about for helping get over target panic but above and beyond all that I want you to really develop conscious thought to a shot process this is just something that has to, you know, it's almost like if you're in martial arts, it's almost like a kata. You're, you're focusing on specific movements and the overall picture is going to look really good. So first and foremost is going to be your stance. You want to stand with your feet shoulder apart. Um, you can maybe get a shot down here, James, at my feet. The way my feet are positioned, if I were to put an arrow straight to the target, you can see 
the tip of my front foot, this is, or my tip of my back foot is on the arrow, whereas my front foot would be slightly behind the arrow, okay? So this slightly opens, opens me up just a little bit, and you know, this is gonna be important for a lot of things. The next thing that I do, look down at my feet, my system goes right to my hand, I focus on my grip position, and I'm not gonna go in depth with these things today because this is all stuff we've talked about in the past, and we'll probably focus more specific feeds on these in the future, but I've got my stance, my grip. The next thing is gonna be when I raise this bow to the target, I'm gonna actually point my scope on the target in the center of the target. I think a lot of people that are trying to overcome target panic, they get themselves in trouble because they get in the habit of drawing very far over the target or drawing a lot under the target, okay? And if you're drawing way above the target or you're drawing way below the target, then it's gonna take you a lot longer to, to acquire that position. And I think it's important when you're focusing on overall energy and you know making sure that you're not overexerting yourself, you really need to focus on getting on that target as efficiently as possible, making sure you go through your system check, and then being able to just look at that target and allow this shot to happen. I want you to keep in mind, if you start to draw your focus on your pin more so than the target, then you have a higher percentage chance of developing target panic or overcoming this condition. You really need to focus your attention downrange and then also focus your attention on what's happening behind this shooting line, mainly in the back half of your body and how you're pulling through this target. You know, I like to focus on the tip of my rear elbow pulling through to something behind me. So I almost have my attention, I have my attention on far opposite spectrums, okay? I'm not drawing my attention to what's at the end of my hand and how steady that bow is. All that stuff will come with time. If you draw your attention to your process, your checklist, and then allow yourself to focus as far away from your problem area, which is what your pin's doing, to the target, and then also as you're pulling through, focus on thinking of that tip of that elbow pulling to something that's on that wall behind you. It'll help draw out that attention span away from where a lot of the problems arise, which is where that pin is setting. So the main thing is, everyone at home needs to understand that people think that they're afraid to miss, okay? And I believe that people are actually more afraid to hit simply because you're not willing to put your pin on the target. If your pin's not on the target, it's not gonna hit the target. That's the bottom line. So a lot of people that freeze underneath the target and then they lift and punch or they're completely off the target and just try to swing by it and hit the trigger, you know, you're more afraid to hit. You're not afraid to miss. And you need to come to realization with that because I really believe that how you perform and how fast you overcome something is all about mindset, okay? If you wanna, if you wanna get over, um, if you've been a smoker for most of your life, or if you've been a smoker for a year and all of a sudden the day comes where you're like, you know what, I'm not gonna mess around with this, 100%, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit smoking. A lot of those people do, where the people that aren't really sure, then eventually it comes back. Same's true with drinking, same's true with target panic. The day came for me where I knew that I was sick and tired of making improper shots. You know, I can raise my hand and say 100%, I was a trigger puncher, I froze beneath the target, I shot on the tournament circuit as an amateur for years, freezing under the target, having to set my sight to where I hit above my pin, or learning to lift and punch the trigger. And you know, there's times where that works, but the majority of the time, that doesn't work where the crap. Um, you're gonna have really highs, you're gonna have really lows, and the problem with that style of shooting is, it's at its worst 
when pressure is at its highest. And that's when you really need to have a shot that you can 100% trust, 100% focus on. So you really need to get yourself in the mindset of you're here and you're training right now to overcome this. And you really wanna focus on shot process and execution and really judging yourself on how well you're executing your shots based off your process and based on how you're pulling through. So we've got our stance, got our grip position. We're gonna raise this bow and point it towards the target. Then I'm gonna draw my release hand back towards my face. I'm gonna anchor, adjust my head so I'm looking through the center of my peep. And from that point, I'm gonna release my safety and I'm gonna focus at the target and I'm gonna focus on pulling through the shot. Now right now, I've got a pin on my target or in my scope and I'm really just sitting here shooting at a blank bail. I think this is a great technique. Right now I'm at about 10 yards. Um, you can certainly do it at five. You can do it closer if you want. Um, this is a great technique, but really when you start out your practice sessions, I want you to take some time. A lot of people want to maybe stretch out a little bit before they shoot, you know, get loosened up. I did, I actually swung a steel mace around for a while, um, which I really like for my getting all my scapulas loose. But um, while I was doing that, I was also visualizing what type of shots I wanted to make tonight. That's gonna be really important going forward because if you're gonna wanna improve and you're gonna wanna beat this thing, you're the only one that is gonna make that happen. I'm not gonna be able to make you do it if you're not willing to do it. That's the bottom line. I can show you all the right paths. I can lay out a perfect trail. I can put all my little reflective, uh, you know, reflectors and tell you that you just gotta follow those and you're gonna find my tree stand. But the bottom line is, if you try to get there yourself and you get off course and you're not focusing on what's at the end, then you're gonna end up having a problem. So you really need to get your head around quality shots and also the fact that your goal right now and your mission is to do something that you've never done and that's to be able to get your pin Put it in that target, trust that it's moving around, and pull through the shot. Now, if you're to the point where you can't do that yet, then what you may want to start with is either no sight at all or a sight with a very, very big target. I've got a 4x4 four four fluorescent yellow target down there, so I really don't give a crap where this hits. And actually, with most of my students, they'll tell you too. I hardly ever look at where they hit because I don't care. I know if they execute the shot that I want right here, what's going on down there takes care of itself. That's the reality. So my process, I've rested my shoulder. I'm looking down at my stance, looking at my grip, pointing my, you can point your stabilizer on the target, you can point your arrow on the target, draw your release hand back to your face, anchor, I'm gonna let off my safety, and I'm gonna just slowly pull my elbow to something behind me until that shot fires off. That was a perfect shot. So if you're at home, here's your first step. Let's just work on learning how to utilize this release, or a release. This is a, a silverback. No, they're not back in stock yet, for all of you that are asking. We're working on it but they're not back yet. So you need to just sit here and do this. You know, take about 10 minutes and just do this. If it freaks you out a little bit to have a sight on the front, then take that sight off. Don't worry about just not having a sight at all. You know, you could always unscrew your lens and just have an open housing just so you get in the habit of centering your housing and your peep, but just look through that and look at a small little spot on that target and just while you're staring at that spot, focus on continual movement, continual movement until it fires. And really, this doesn't matter what release you're using, the process is the exact same. So 
You know, here, we're gonna, last night I kicked a, cooked a big old bone-in pork roast. Here's what I'm cooking tonight. I'm cooking up some releases for all you guys and gals at home. So, one of you at home, tell me which one you want me to use. What do you want me to use? You want me to use a brass hinge? You want me to use a A tension, like a classic hinge? You want a wise choice? You want a wrist strap? What do you guys want? You tell me. First one to tell me, that's what I'm gonna shoot for you. Trevor Corrier says wrist strap. All right, wrist strap. Thanks, Trevor. Knew you'd do that to me. No problem. So, let's grab this wrist strap. That's what a lot of you guys shoot. So I'm gonna talk about how I would shoot this. Let's say you're in the same problem. You don't have a silverback. You've got one of these releases. So let's talk about this. When you have a wrist strap release, here's what I want. I want you to always be able to fasten this to where it's at the same position on your wrist. Because what's important about overcoming target panic is consistency and being able to focus on your shot. If this is tight one time and then the next time it's a little bit looser and this thing is further away from your finger, then you're gonna run into problems because here's an important thing when we talk about target panic. This, your index finger, when people ask why other releases are better for curing target panic, it's because the tip of our index finger is one of the most sensitive parts of our hand. We can determine pressure from this bend to the tip of that finger almost better with that than any other part of our hands that we have, or your feet, or anything else. This index finger right here is very sensitive. I mean, this is, this is made for us to feel things and know what it's like. Okay, so what you want to do is you actually want to take away from that feeling because the biggest cause of target panic is anticipation. And travel or pressure change or anything that lets your brain know that your shot could happen, it's going to happen, it's about to happen. If you're not fully comfortable with where your pin is, and if you're not fully comfortable with the fact that sometimes you're gonna miss, then you having that type of sensitivity on the tip of that finger is gonna cause you a problem. So here's what you wanna do. You want this tight, and you wanna set the, re the release to where when it's cocked, okay, let me cock this one. When I take my hand and I curl it in the same position as if I were to be shooting a gun, or the same position as if I'm shooting my handheld release, the only difference is these three fingers here are curled around that strap. But ideally, you want this set to where you're almost in the exact same position. I like the trigger to be in this position here. I want my finger curled around that trigger I don't want the trigger on the tip of my finger. I want it here. Once I'm in that position, I'm gonna slightly relax my other fingers as I pull my elbow to the target behind me and it will pull that trigger to make this fire without having to bend the trigger, okay? This one I'll just do it with my hunting bow, actually. So, let's, uh, Let's grab my hunting bow here for all of you hunters out there. Okay, so we're hooked up. I'm gonna squeeze around my strap like this. Draw back. Okay, I'm gonna take my index finger knuckle, put it at the base of my earlobe, right? I'm gonna curl my finger around this trigger, and then I'm gonna relax these fingers here. These are relaxed. This is curled around the trigger, and I'm gonna pull this elbow to the target behind me. Never move the finger. It's the same exact motion. As you could tell, 
My knuckle was at the base of my earlobe, fingers around the trigger, head position's exactly the same. I'll just show you right now. We can take, we don't want that in. So now, without ever moving my setup, you'll find that I can actually draw back, I can anchor the same head here, my hands upside down, but everything, my fitting is the same. I can pull right through, same thing, never move my finger, okay? Now, if by chance we wanted to shoot a hinge release, okay, let's grab a hinge release. This is going to be the same thing. I'm focusing downrange. I'm going to hook this hinge on here. I'm really going to only pull back, mainly with the pressure here. If you pull back with any of these fingers, it's going to fire. Okay. So I'm going to go through my process. Draw. I'm going to anchor. Then I'm going to relax my index finger while I'm continually pulling the elbow slow and steady to something behind me relaxing the index finger just looking at the target focusing on a good shot relaxing till it fires okay when you're focusing on just shooting at a blank bail like this your attention is on just trusting that natural movement and going through this process a big part of you overcoming target panic is to come to the realization that sometimes your pin is not going to be perfectly in the middle. Your pin is going to move, and that's natural. You got to be able to deal with that. But there's a couple things. Again, if you can't do this with your pin on a blank target, you can see we've got a blank target down here. This is what I shot at. This is a blank target. And actually, what you'll find is a lot of times, for example, those two shots that I made with the hunt and release or with the hunt and bow, if you're staring at a, at a super small spot, even with no sight, you'll find that just your natural instincts are going to draw you in to almost the same spot. I think it'll surprise you how well you'll shoot even without a sight. Now, if you can't aim at a blank bail like that, take your sight all the way off. Don't have a sight, depending on how much panic you have. That's really a great step. The next thing you can do, and the next thing you should do, if you're comfortable aiming at a completely blank bail like that, then the next thing you need to do is take a big target. Jason Breland asks, where can you get big targets like that? LancasterArchery.com. That's where you can get them. Yep. So that's a 60, that's a 60 centimeter field face right there. You could also get, you know, you could get a big field face like this. I think, I think you meant the, the bag. Oh, that the actual, actual target. target. Yeah. Those are, those are hurricane and block range targets. Um, Pretty sure your Lancaster can get those too. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually, if you've worked on shooting at a blank bail, then your next uh, step, again, your main focus is gonna be have to convince yourself that your focus is good quality shots. So the next step is gonna be working on that same exact timing and same exact sequencing, but you're gonna just be looking at a target, but I don't want you to have your sight on yet. This is a really good process. Again, this is a great time of year for training. This is a great time of year for incorporating these types of things. And what I like about this step here is you're actually probably not gonna hit the center all the time, 
And I think you understanding that you're just going through this process and the fact that you're not aiming, you don't set yourself an expectation. You're actually probably gonna be mentally okay with not having a perfect group on paper. The really the drill here and what we're focusing on is being able to stare at that at that spot and just let natural movement happen as we pull through. So I'm gonna just look at that spot, go through my checklist, stance, grip, shoulder, I'm gonna anchor, come to my peep. I'm just gonna look through my peep, let off my safety, pull, 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 pull. Perfect. Great shot. And what this shows you as well is if you really start to do this technique a lot and you get good at it, you're going to find that once you put your sight back on and you draw back and anchor and come in, mentally your body is going to start self-aligning to where you're not wasting time being far off the target. You're actually going to find that your mind is able to center things and put you in the middle of the target on its own. It's you that gets in the way of allowing that to happen. Stance, grip, shoulder, anchor, peep, let off the safety, pull, pull, looking at the center of the target, and that's how it goes. This is something that you can do for reps. You can just sit here and get reps in like this. And you just get to the point where you can even start counting in your head. You know, if you have um, a, like a caliper release, there's been times where I've like, okay, let's see just exactly how long and slow I can pull this until it fires. And I'll just count in my head, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000. And make it a game to hold longer. Just slow that pull. And for that, you're really training your ability to trust your front half to float. Now, ideally, if you're in a tournament situation or a hunting situation, you're not going to want to see how slow you can make things go. But all these little drills add up to different things. This is a great drill. But the focus has to be in the center of that target. You have to be staring right at that spider, letting off your safety if you have a tension style release and just pulling through. Scott Chester asks, uh, if you're shooting a hinge release, do you recommend a clicker or no clicker? I don't recommend a click, personally. So. Let's move over here. I want to talk about a little something else. Okay, and this is where, come on over here, James. We're gonna to have to do a little bit of discussion here. So there's a couple different things. I talked about this earlier. It's gonna be loaded to the page. What we did was we actually took a sheet that gives you three different kinds of targets. I picked a 3D target. I picked a deer target, we picked a Vegas face. And there's, so there's three targets. They're all scaled in different sizes. You're gonna be able to print that sheet off on your printer. From there, what I want you to do is we're gonna take these steps one step further and before you start shooting with your pin on a target and really worrying about that, we're actually gonna just take a target like this, wild boar, like shooting hogs. I'm thinking of that, that rib, that bone in pork that I had yesterday. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this target and I'm actually gonna take my hunting site and I'm gonna position this piece of paper inside here to where when I position it where I want it, Let's go right there. I'm just going to take some tape and I'm just going to take a little piece of tape. This is a great exercise. This is something that you can do in your basement at three yards. So all I've done was taped 
the target, we gave you several sizes, several scales, and right here you can see I've got a target set up to shoot at 20 yards. And what's great about this is this system actually allows me to do that same exact process that we just did, but now I'm gonna be able to sit there and visualize making a great shot with my pin perfectly in the center of the target. Okay, so again, this is a great to work with blank bale. I'm gonna go through our process. Actually, that's probably not set up for the pulling weight of my hunting bow. So I'll shoot, I'll just shoot this hinge release right here. Okay, so I'm gonna go through my process and draw back. I'm gonna anchor, look through my peep, and I'm just gonna stare at that 12 ring. Just go through my motions, make a shot. This is something that you can do time and time and time again. Okay, so you pick the target. This is a great way to blank bail, but again, your focus has to be that you are gonna make good shots, that you're not gonna be happy with anything except you focusing on the proper shot back here. Don't be afraid to get pissed at yourself. You know, there was times where I was trying to make a good shot and I still felt some anticipation and made it. I would get mad at myself, you know? You have to get to the point where you're just not gonna accept that anymore. Certain releases are going to be easier to get over this than others. And there's gonna be, for some of you out there, including myself, it took me almost seven or eight years before I could shoot a thumb button again, or especially a wrist strap. It probably took me 10 years before I could shoot that. Even though I was shooting 3Ds on a professional level and winning tournaments, I still could not grab a wrist strap release and make a surprise shot. I felt anxiety. I would feel like I wanted to get on the trigger. So I just would let down and just get rid of that thing. I don't want to use it. I shoot the release that allows me to make surprise shots. Okay, that's got to be the focus. Because I'm not worried about the score. I just want to focus on staring at that target, continuing my motion and making a good shot. Okay, now let's take this. I'm going to show you one last thing here before I get out of here. So, I would like to be longer tonight, but i um, taking Sharon and Little Dud to Star Wars. So, sorry everybody. So, here's my next little secret. So... You can see on that target I just shot out down there, I've got little black dots. Those are just little black dots that I spray painted on there. So what I do for a training um, thing is actually at Walmart, you'll find these little stickers, these circular stickers right here. And then what I do is I'll take that sticker, I can put it on a Ziploc bag and just cut it out like that. And then what you could do is you can take your target scope. For those of you who are target shooters, you're gonna take that baggie. You're just gonna center that on. Of course, it's gonna be hard for me to do it while everyone's watching. So you just center that on there. You would, you would remove your dot on your lens if you want, but this is a great little training tool. You can actually tighten it on there. You can trim this off. And from there, you've got a circle in the center that's foggy around the outside. This is very similar to what Jesse Broadwater shot for a long, long time. What I like about this is it's not a crystal clear picture. This is a great way to focus on just aiming at a dot by looking through your pin. 
instead of trying to, I don't know what mark I was on here now, so let me just take a guess, probably not right. All right, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna try to make yourself comfortable. These steps are things that you're not gonna do in the same night, by the way. These things are all steps that you can do one day, do them two days, then three days, when it gets to the point where you're super comfortable with just making those first shots at a blank bail, you can do that for a week on end. Then let's move to taking the sight off and just focusing on how good you can execute great shots while staring at the target without a sight. Now we're gonna move it to either putting that image on our sight, either directly behind our pin, or in this case, I've got small dots on the target and all we're gonna focus on is staring through that cloudy ring and just looking past the ring at the target that's behind it and just being totally cool with the fact that sometimes we're gonna see it, sometimes we're not, but we're just gonna to continue to pull through. Pulling through. Again, don't really worry about where your arrows are landing if you're not sighted in. You know, I've been moving around a lot. I'm obviously not sighted in. I'm just focused on shot quality, shot execution, being efficient, acquiring the target in a manageable time. And then you can see that my, my actual activation and my pull through is super, super consistent with timing. And there we go. So you guys all at home have something to work on. Um, I'm not gonna answer questions right now. I'll hit those in the podcast tomorrow for you guys. Appreciate it. Um, hopefully these are giving you some awesome steps to work on your panic. James, is there anything I need to know about? Any major pop-ups? Anybody? Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it so much. And uh, please share. Remember, go to the John Dudley Athlete page if you want to. And you can print off that sheet or we'll post them later. Make sure you say thanks to Justin for that. He made that happen tonight. We're in a little bit of a panic. And um, I don't know, I think that's it. Other than, oh yeah. In case for you diehards out there, if you didn't notice, I talked Sharon into making a Dia de Arco hoodie. So those are available too. So thanks everybody. Have a, hopefully a warm, warm last few hours of your Sunday. See ya.